Should you be investing in a company or in your own name? Let's look at HMOs today and let's do the numbers. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. One question I get asked all the time is should I be buying my property through a limited company or should I be buying it in my own name? And the only real way to know for certain is to do the numbers. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's jump into the numbers and I'm going to show you how you can start looking at calculating some of these things and throwing some of your own numbers in. So our focus today is really on whether a HMO should be bought in a company or not. So we're going to dive into if you own it in your own name. And the starting point here is what's our rental income going to be and what are the costs associated with that property. So we've got things like utility, broadband, TV license and any of the other costs that fit in. We've also got our insurance costs. We've got our ICO costs, our information commissioner's officer. And then we've got things like the repairs for that specific property. Some overall costs, we've got your accountancy fees for doing your tax return. So that gives us an idea of what sort of profits we will have. And that takes us on to the interest that we will be paying on it. And this will give us our profits before tax. So let's move down to look at the tax position. Now, with section 24, we now ignore the interest to calculate our tax and then we get the tax rate relief claim. So we can see here that our tax for a basic rate taxpayer is around 1700 and for a higher rate taxpayer, because you only get 20% tax relief on the interest, is now up at 6000 So the key thing here we need to be looking at is how much money we're actually being left with in our pockets, which we can see now is that if you're a basic rate taxpayer, it's just under seven thousand and for a high rate taxpayer it will be around the two and a half so this is where companies start to come into play so let's jump over to a company side of things and have a look at where it sits on that side of things to see whether actually going into a company may be an option for you so thinking about our company our rental income is going to remain relatively the same it doesn't change because of a different entity again the costs are probably going to be relatively similar for a property as is things like insurance repairs your information commissioner's officer and your interest on mortgage which in this case is going to be allowable before we calculate the taxes because it's allowable within a company We've also got slightly increased accountancy fees and they're likely to be bank charges on your expenses. So really just throw all the costs that you know that are going to be incurred to get down to your profits. Now to find out what rates, you can check out some of the videos on the channel to do with associated companies and tax rates to find out what you're going to be charged. But on our simple example here today for a one single standalone company with profits of around 8,000, we're going to be taxed at 19%. So that means that on this occasion, we're going to have around 1,500 of tax and our profits after tax are going to be around 6,500. Now, if we leave all of the profits in the company, then there will be no further taxes to pay. Or if we take dividends up to the 0% allowance rate that we have, there won't be any tax to pay. Now, let's have a quick look at how much money you are left with and what taxes you pay. So as we can see now, we've gone down to the bottom where we've got the tax you'll pay is 1500 and the money left in your pocket is around the six and a half thousand, which for a high rate taxpayer is a much better position to be in than it is if you were doing it in your own name. Obviously, compared to doing it in your own name as an individual, if you've got no other income, that you're probably still going to end up with a little bit more in your own name. But these are the comparisons that you need to be making to see what is going to be the right option for you as an individual. This leads us on to the final bit, which is what about when you get a second property? What are the implications? So as you can see in our numbers here, we're 
keeping it the same so we've got another hma performing exactly the same as the other one that we've just been through but some of the costs are not duplicated so things like your bank charges your accountants fees they're only going to be on the first property they might go up slightly but they're not going to go up materially so when we get to our second property we're obviously going to see some more tax that we've got to pay at the 19 percent because we're under 50,000 but the profits distributable will be slightly higher as well. So we're now in a good position that we've now got, what's that, 14,000, 15,000 in our company, which is amazing to have built that much up. And we can choose whether we want to take that out or not, which is one of the best things about companies that we get that choice and option. We pay the corporation tax and then we choose when we pay the next amount of tax. This can be great planning, depending what your plan is for your property portfolio and what your goals are with what you are achieving. As you can see, there's quite a few things that you need to take into account and consider when you are looking at this question. And everyone's situation is going to be slightly different. So you need to look about the circumstances that you are, what's your tax rates, what your implications would be for doing this. Is it a couple, you and a spouse that are doing this or you and a partner? Or is it just you doing it by yourself? All these sorts of things will have an impact on what the numbers will show. And every story is slightly different. So do your numbers and see what your numbers come out at to help you assess what is going to be the right option. A final point to make is, even though today we've spoken about the numbers, there may be other reasons why actually going limited might be the right solution for you. And that comes down to mostly risk. If you're doing something a little bit risky or you don't want to risk your own home with the project you're doing, you may want to go down a limited company route, even though the numbers point to doing it in your own name. So just have a bit of a consideration of what may be the right option for you so that you can be getting this right. Hopefully today you've discovered how to do the numbers on figuring out whether a limited company or doing it in your own name is going to be the right option for you. If you do have any questions or comments, then please do let me know. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel and let's make tax less taxing. Let's take tax less taxes.